Hello again and welcome to ISAC Software Academy Linux course. This lesson is about the Linux file system or systems I should say and also covers what a file system is as well as a brief coverage of NTFS. A file system is in effect a method used to access files and directories on some type of storage media. This is usually a hard drive but can include an SSD, USB flash drive, SD card or any similar device. Without a file system to use in order to write to and read from a storage device any system would be unable to use that storage device as there needs to be a way to access and store the information in a standard way so that it can be accessed via different systems. For example, if you created a file system for your Linux PC and you wanted your friend to access information from that PC, he would need to use that same Linux PC in order to access it unless the file system could be read by his system, which in this instance could be a Mac operating system and as such he could use that drive as if it were his own. If however it was a Windows system Microsoft Windows is unable to read almost all of the Linux file systems without assistance and in some cases not at all. That assistance comes in the form of third-party applications. Linux however can access a large array of different file systems without the need to utilize third-party software as it is almost all integrated into the Linux kernel. Obviously, as I have implied, there are many different systems that can be used and not just in Linux but in many other different operating systems as well. An example as the most popular would be the XX series of file systems the X representing a number between 1 and 4, the latest being X4. There is also Riser FS, which by all rights should be replaced by Riser 4, which is its latest incarnation. There is, however, some who have political reasons for not using Riser as the inventor or I should say original inventor of the Riser file system was convicted of murder and as a result many people choose not to use the Riser file system however it is no longer run by him but by Namesys who have released version 4 back in 2004. There is also JFS which stands for Journaling File System and what this means is changes are kept track of in what is called a journal that is usually a circular log in some dedicated area of the file system 
before being committed to the main file system. This method allows for less chance of the system becoming corrupted and as a result having corrupted data or programs. JFS in particular was created by IBM and was released in 1990 and 1991 respectively as there were two versions one called JFS1 and the other was simply known as JFS on Linux but is actually JFS2. Obviously IBM having their own Unix flavor called AIX built this specifically for AIX however an implementation for the Linux kernel was made available as free software under the terms of the GNU GPL. XFS is another journaling file system just as the ext file systems as of version named ext3 and obviously this includes ext4 as well as riser fs however xfs was particularly proficient at parallel io which allows the system to access multiple storage devices simultaneously which can obviously provide a large performance benefit if the file system is capable of doing so efficiently as XFS was. XFS however was introduced in 1994 by Silicon Graphics Incorporated. The extended file system or EXT was originally released in 1992 specifically for Linux it was modeled after the UNIX file system or UFS and was eventually superseded by ext2 which despite having been replaced by ext3 and also ext4 is still the file system of choice for flash based memory storage devices due to its lower number of writes on average. ext3 eventually replaced ext2 and introduced the journaled file system and this was released in 2001 and has been superseded by ext4. ext3 however is still considered the primary file system for the majority of Linux installs. ext4 was designed to be the successor of ext3 however was also designed to be as backward compatible as possible just as x3 was to x2 and x2 to x1 x4 was introduced in an unstable version first in 2006 and then finally as a stable version in 2008 X4 can be found in a variety of locations, not limited to simply desktops or servers, but also in some mobile phones and other areas. During my brief introduction earlier, I covered the riser details, such as it being introduced in 2001 by Namesys, and that it had been replaced by Riser 4. 
However, what I did not mention was that it is not implemented in the Linux kernel and as a result of this is not widely used in Linux. The most widely used riser file system is riser fs itself which was also known as riser 3. It is incorporated into the Linux kernel and hence was the most widely used of the file systems and obviously as I stated earlier it is a journaling file system as I mentioned earlier the journaled file system was created by IBM and released for the Linux kernel under GPL it was known for all-around good performance in that it was a good performer in most areas there was no real fault to it but it was not perf perfect at any specific type either where most other file systems are geared towards a particular task JFS was designed to be good at all of them rather than the best at one specific thing. JFS was first released for Linux in 2001. XFS, as I stated earlier, is a journaling file system released in 1994 by Silicon Graphics and known for its parallel I.O. What I didn't mention was that as a result of its performance in parallel I.O. It has been used by NASA in their advanced supercomputing division utilizing over 300 terabytes for an XFS file system. Most of the systems you will encounter while using Linux in any type of environment will be the extended file system types. Some systems however will use lesser known file systems and they will do this for a particular purpose such as a primary feature that is needed for their particular implementation Linux can also use NTFS which is the Microsoft Windows file system used in the NT series of their Windows file system. NTFS is what replaced the FAT file system which stood for file allocation table and was used in the 9x series and previous such as the DOS systems which Linux can also handle. FAT is still used today in the use of external hard drives and USB flash drives and is the only real way you will find a FAT file system still being used today. In older Linux distributions NTFS was not supported. At one stage it was supported as read only and then eventually read and write support was provided. Generally you will find NTFS systems in use with Linux on home desktop systems where a dual boot configuration is being implemented. There are also many other file systems in use however there are too many to cover in this lesson. I encourage you to search for them and learn about them as you may find it useful in the future. 
I hope you have enjoyed this lesson. Thank you for joining us.